الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد I welcome all of you and we continue بإذن الله تعالى reading from the explanation of the creed شرح السنة of الإمام البربهاري رحمه الله with the comments and explanation of our noble شيخ العلامة الدكتور صالح بن فوزان الفوزان حفظه الله. We still gonna read from the point 25. We continue, inshallah, because it's a little bit long point. And it's this point is about the Sahaba, رضوان الله عليهم. It's about the companions. And what is the belief that every Muslim should have as relate to the companions of the Messenger of Allah, صلى الله عليه وسلم. And who are the best amongst them in virtue and the like? <clears throat> we learn so far that we supposed to know the makana and the virtue and the rank and the position of the companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We should love them and has respect for them, all of them, without any exception. Rather, loving them is a sign of Iman. It's a sign of Iman to love the companions. And we should not allow anyone to speak ill about them. And we should defend them. Because Allah has chosen them to be the companions of His Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah chose them so that they can disseminate His message of Islam. Alhamdulillah, and they did. The best of them is Abu Bakr, as Siddiq, radiallahu an, bin Umar, and Uthman, and Ali. Then the rest of the ten who were given the glad tidings of Jannah in one hadith. And then after that, we mention in virtue, people of Badr and the Bay'ah and those who made Muhajirun, Ansar, Alhamdulillah. We continue. Qala al-Imam al-Barbahari rahimahullah. Thumma afdalu al-nasi ba'da ha'ula man sahiba Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yawman aw shahran aw sanatan aw aqalla min thalika aw akthar نترحم عليهم ونذكر فضلهم ونكف عن زللهم ولا نذكر أحدا منهم إلا بالخير لقول رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا ذكر أصحابي فأمسكوا وقال سفيان بن عيينة من نطق في أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بكلمة فهو صاحب هوى This point here Imam Barbahari continues saying, he says, then the best of people after those so far he has mentioned are those who accompanied the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for a day or a month or a year or less or more or less or more. We invoke Allah's mercy upon them. We mention their merits and abstain from their mistakes. We do not mention any one among the, them, in the companions, except with what is good, based on the statement of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If my companions are mentioned, refrain from speaking ill about them or abusing them or saying anything bad about them. Sufyan ibn Uyayna, rahimahullah, says, he who says 
or utters a word against the companions of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, is a person who follows his desires instead of adhering to the truth. <clears throat> In the explanation, our noble Shaykh al Allama Salih bin Fawzan, Al Fawzan, may Allah preserve him and all of our noble scholars, he says, A suhbah, companionship, differs in excellence and among it is one whose companionship with the Messenger of Allah was for a long period of time or one whose companionship was for a short period. However, the person has the merit of companionship even, even if his companionship was for a short period. Even if it was for a short period. As for the saying of Imam Barbahari rahimahullah ta'ala, we invoke Allah's mercy upon them. So just from the beginning we we uh, we we notice now and we learn that anyone who met the Prophet وسلم, while believing in him and died upon that is a companion of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, regardless how long he spent even if he met him for one moment he is considered from the companions so therefore the ulama they mention if someone believed in the Messenger of Allah وسلم, while the Prophet وسلم, was alive but never met him he is not considered the companion he, gotta, he has to meet him at least once. As for the saying of Imam Barbahari, we invoke Allah's mercy upon the companions. We mention their merits and abstain from, abstain from their mistakes. And abstain from their mistakes. He says, Sheikh Salah Fulun says, the right of the companions upon us, so because the companions have rights over us, is that we ask for Allah's pleasure on them. We say radiallahu anhum. If it's a plural. If it's three and more, we say radiallahu anhum. If it's one, we say radiallahu anhu. If it's a, a male. If it's female like Khadija, Aisha, Hafsa, we say radiallahu anha. If it's two, we say radiallahu anhuma. If it's three female, and up we say radiallahu anhunna. But in general, when we talk about the companions, we say radiallahu anhum. May Allah be pleased with them. And we seek for his mercy on them. And we should emulate them, follow their example. We praise them. And definitely we restrain our tongue from defaming all of them or any one of them or entering into vain discourse concerning what happened among them of fitna, tribulation and crisis, because each one of them was a mujtahid. Mujtahid meaning every one of them was seeking the truth. As related to what happened between some of the companions like Aisha and Ali or Ali and Muawiyah, all of them they, they were seeking what is right. But what happened, happened. The one who was right among them will receive double reward, while the one who errs will receive one reward, and his mistakes are pardoned. In addition, the companions Ridwanullahi alayhim, they have noble deeds that will expiate the errors which occurred from some of them. So now, if you find yourself in a gathering or somebody wants to tell you, oh, you know what happened between Ali and, uh, and Muawiyah, for example, and this, say, listen, we, we don't supposed to be talking about these things. These are noble companions. We don't say that some of them was wrong and this and that. We just leave their matters with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
As for the saying of the Imam Barbahari, we do not mention anyone among the companions except with good. Sheikh Salah al Fawzan said, This is because they desire the truth. Sahaba. They desire the truth, the haqq, and strive for it. Each of them, each one of them acted on his judgment. Some of them were right while some erred and were forgiven. Remember, we're talking about the companions here, the best of this ummah. The Sheikh says all of them were the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu We should not interfere in what took place among them. He says, ponder over this verse. This verse that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, "وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ" This is in Surah Al-Hashr, chapter fifty-nine, verse ten. "وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ" and those who came after them. And that is meaning after the Muhajirun and the Ansar, those who come after the companions. يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا غْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَا بِالْإِيمَانِ وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلًّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا So, and those who came after them, Say, our Lord, forgive us and our brethren who have preceded us in faith. These are the companions. And put not in our hearts any hatred against those who have believed. Consequently, Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said regarding this, he said regarding this, among the usul, meaning principles, among the usul of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, the principles of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah is the safety of their hearts and tongues towards the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In this ayah here, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala command anyone who comes after the companions to seek forgiveness for them. Now you find the Shia, they rebuke and speak ill about most of the companions, except for a handful. And how can they be upon the truth? When they oppose clearly the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu so here Ibn, Ibn Taymiyyah says, among the fundamental principles of Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah is the safety of their hearts and tongues towards the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as he came in Al-Aqid Al-Wasitiyya, page 40 Sheikh Salah al said, safety of their hearts means they do not hate any one of them and safety of their tongues means they do not discuss any one of them in a bad manner or disparage him unlike the Shia al rawafid the Prophet ﷺ stated in authentic hadith, as reported by Imam al Bukhari in his Sahih number 3470, and in Imam Muslim in his Sahih, Hayat number 2541, on the authority of Abi Sa'id al Khudri. مَا بَلَغَ مُدَّ أَحَدِهِمْ وَلَا نَصِيفًا Prophet Sallallahu says, Do not revile my companions. By him in whose hand is my life, meaning by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, had any one of you spent a pile of gold as big as the Mount of Uhud, that's a big mountain by the way, to the north of Medina, had any one of you spent a pile of gold as big as Mount of Uhud, in charity, it would not amount to as much as one mud handful of one of them, nor even a half of that. Subhanallah. As for the statement of Imam al Barbahari in his great book and this classic book, Sharh al Sunnah, Explanation of the Creed, when he says, Do not abuse my companions. Sheikh Salah al Fawzan says, then one who is mentally retarded 
shaken in Iman, with evil desires in him, will come and start speaking against the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. See? So only a person who is mentally retarded, he's shaken in his Iman, with evil desires in him, will come and start speaking against the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If he were to be among the misguided sects, we would not regard it much. The problem is that such affiliates himself affiliates himself to Ahlul Sunnah al Jama'ah and claims that this, meaning his criticism, is part of historical verification. The Sheikh says for those who speak ill about the companions and they says now this is just history you know we just have to tell it as it is huh you're a muslim we mean talking about tell it as it is we we, we muslim we we follow the quran we follow the sunnah we are commanded by allah and by his messenger وسلم, not to speak ill about the companions so the sheikh says are you charged with historical verification you interfere in something that you do not know about. Then harm will result from it by making people have doubt concerning the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well as implant the hatred of the companions of Allah's Messenger in the hearts of people like what Sayyid Qutb when he spoke about Muawiyah and and other than him, subhanAllah. That's Allah, salam al -afiyah. Now you find Ikhwan Muslimin, they revere this man. And he didn't study. And themselves they say that Sayyid Qutb never studied. So if he never studied, so why are you taking knowledge from his books that are filled with mistakes? Alhamdulillah, may Allah reward our noble Shaykh Al-Allama Rabi Ibn Hadi Al-Madkhali. حفظه الله تعالى ومتعه بالصحة والعافية for refuting the mistakes of this man, Sayyid Qutb. He's refuting from his books. He will bring al-adala. He will bring dilal في dilal al-Quran. He will bring a taswir al-fanni. He will bring books and with the page, with the edition, number, everything the publisher name and he says this is the mistake and this is where he went wrong and this is in opposition to the aqidah of Ahlul Sunnah al Jama'ah. Jazakallah khairan. So Sheikh Sayyid al Rosan says therefore what is obligatory is to refrain from discussing about what occurred among the companions. As for the statement of Imam Barbahari rahimahullah when he said Based on the statements of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu if my companions are mentioned, refrain from abusing them. And more explicit than the hadith above is he's saying, let us subbu ashabi, do not revile my companions. He says, do not revile nor speak ill about my companions. This is a prohibition, Sheikh Salah Fawzan says. This is a prohibition from abusing any of the companions. Therefore, what is obligatory is that we seek for Allah's mercy and forgiveness for them, acting on the statement of Allah, the Most High, وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُ Most High, وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِيْخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَ بِالْإِيمَانِ Surah Al-Hashr, verse 10, and those who came after them say, Our Lord forgive us and our brethren who have preceded us in faith. These are the companions. And we should re re restrain our tongues and pens and from discussions about the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu we should rather defend them, refute anyone who disparages any of the companions, and invalidate his saying because he is in opposition to the correct aqidah, the aqidah of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Shaykh al Islam Rutaymi Rahimahullah said in Al Wasatiya, in his book Al Wasatiya, page 40, what is reported against them in the companions is either not correct. What is reported against the companions, 
is either not correct, which is part of lies and interpolation, and as for what is correct from it, the one who was involved acts based on his judgment. And if the expert acting upon his judgment in a matter is correct, then he will have double reward. But if he errs, he will have one reward. Moreover, they have virtues, the companions, they have virtues that can expiate and cover up the errors that occur from some of them. That's the end of the statement of Sheikh al-Islam al in al-Wasatiyya, al-Aqid al-Wasatiyya. Sheikh Salih al-Fawzan al-Fawzan says, The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said regarding Hatib ibn Abi Balta'ah radiyallahu an, when he made a juristic conclusion and wrote a letter to the people of Mecca, to get some immunity from them as it relates to his family and property from the disbelievers of Mecca. Okay? And Umar said, Leave me to strike the neck of this hypocrite. But the Prophet said to him, we do not know, O oh Omar, perhaps Allah has looked into the people of Badr, meaning those Sahaba companions who participate in the battle of Badr, and said, Do whatever you wish, for I have indeed forgiven you. This is in Sayyid al Bukhari, number 2845, and in Sayyid Muslim, hadith number 2494, from the hadith of Ali. Anh. So this companion here, Hatib ibn Abi Balta'a, was one of those who witnessed the battle of Badr. Even though he made that mistake, but he has a reason why he did what he did. As for the saying of Imam Barbahari, when he quotes the statement of this great Imam, Sufyan ibn Uyayna, rahimah ta'ala, who said, He who utters a word against the companions of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is a person of desires. So this is because none speaks against, Sheikh Fawzan says, this is because none speaks against the companions except a person of desires who acts in defiance to the companions of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, like the Shia and whoever support them on that, like Tariq Suwaydan and, and his people and his posse and his whoever support him on that. He said, what is obligatory on us regarding them, Sahaba, the companions, is to love, respect, honor, and emulate their example. It is also important to know their worth. Because they are the best of, of, of generations since they saw the Prophet ﷺ and believed in him, accompanied him, supported him fought alongside him and acquired knowledge from him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa radiyallahu anhu majma'een for all of these reasons they regarded they, they, they are regarded as the best in this ummah in fact they are the best of creatures after the prophets and messengers because Allah specifically chose them to accompany his prophet Muhammad sallallahu the seal of prophets and the best of the messengers Allahu Akbar so the sheikh says so no one defames them except the one that has resentment and hatred in his heart against Islam Allahu Akbar against Islam for in reality he does not defame them in their persons but only defames them because of what they stood for, of aiding the religion and conveying it to the people as a trust. So Fawzan said, So we say that the one who defames the companions only does that because of the grudges he has against Islam. Because he has nothing against them. They didn't take his money or property. His rage is being quenched through that, and because of this, he wants to see severe the relationship, to sever the relationship of the Ummah 
with its prophet Muhammad Sallallahu since the companions are the intermediary between the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu and we the Muslims of later generations. So this is the goal of whoever defames them, like the Shia, for example, when they speak about bad about most of the companions, so that when you hear the name Abu Bakr, you hate him and you don't listen to him, you don't take any hadith that comes from these companions. When they speak ill about Abu Huraira, then whenever you hear Abu Huraira says, he says, no, we cannot take from Abu Huraira. And if you don't take from Abu Huraira, the ahadith now of Abu Huraira, how are you going to worship Allah SWT? Now, this man has narrated most of the ahadith that can be used in so many fields of the religion, alhamdulillah. So after Allah mentioned the Muhajirun and the Ansar in Surah Al-Hashr, He says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَ بِالْإِيمَانِ وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلًّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And those who came after them say, mean after the companions, after the Muhajirin and the Ansar, what they say? They make dua for them. SubhanAllah, look at this. They say, Our Lord, forgive us and our brethren who have preceded us in faith, meaning the companions, the Muhajirin and the Ansar, and put not in our hearts any hatred against those who have believed. Amen. Sheikh Salah al-Fawzan al said, This shows that the one who defames the companions or any one of them does so only as a result of the resentment he has in his heart against them. Amen. And this is why Sufyan ibn Uyayna radiallahu anhu ra, rahimahullah this noble imam he says he who utters a word against the companions of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa is a person of desires. He follows his desires. He doesn't follow the text of revelation. It is desires that made him to do this. And vain desire means hating them and having grudges against them. Thus you will find that the worst of people are those who defame the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They are publicly exposed for telling lies and as a result have brought on themselves hatred among the people. None sees them except that he dislikes them. As Allah has placed hatred for them on the, on the earth, meaning those who speak ill about the companions. No one sees those who hate the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu except that he has hatred and detestation for them in his heart. We ask Allah for well-being. Ameen. Sheikh Fawzan Havata'ala continue by saying, however, his hatred neither harms the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi nor Islam. The Shia and whoever follow them, they don't. In reality, they don't. That doesn't harm the companions nor Islam. The worth and reward of the companions are reserved for them. And Islam will continue to exist and prevail unto Allah is all praise due. But they only harm themselves. Those who speak ill about the companions, they only harm themselves. The Sheikh said, however, the fear is for the one who reads their books among those who do not have knowledge. For it is fair that something of bad feelings is planted in his heart against the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu and is therefore influenced by that. Many among the Muslim children have fallen prey as a result of reading the books of these people. This is because when a person reads them, these books, he is influenced by them and finds in his heart hatred against the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu or at least their work is reduced and their status decline in his sight. So do not read these books. If you find books out there or there is like series, somebody is talking about what happened between Ali and Muawiyah and this, do not listen to those things. And do not read anything about that. Protect your heart. 
The Sheikh said this is the fear for the Muslim youth and those who are not versed in knowledge, that they might be influenced by these books which defame the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu He said, especially nowadays when they are published, then printed with the best print and cover and also advertised at book fairs. So these persons find that as opportunity to publicize and spread slander against the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So there is no doubt that defaming the companions of the Messenger of Allah amounts to defaming the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself. The Sheikh said, how could his companions be those whom they describe with these ugly qualities? This is defamation of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is also it also amounts to denying the book of Allah because Allah has indeed praised the companions in the glorious Quran in many verses which includes the statements of Allah the Most High in Surah At-Tawbah chapter 9 the famous verse 100 وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنْصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهُ وأعد لهم جنات تجري تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها أبدا ذلك الفوز العظيم ذلك الفوز العظيم and the first to embrace Islam of the Muhajirun mean those who migrate from Mecca to Al Madina and the Ansar these are the citizens of Al Madina who helped and gave aid to the Muhajirun and also those who follow them exactly in faith. Allah is well pleased with them, as they are well pleased with Him. He has prepared for them gardens under which rivers flow, paradise, to dwell therein forever. That is the supreme success. Ya the Shia say they are kuffar, ya billah. Allah salam al Allah the Exalted says also in Surah Al Fatih, verses 18 and 19. لقد رضي الله عن المؤمنين إذ يبايعونك تحت الشجرة فعلم ما في قلوبهم فأنزل السكينة عليهم وأثابهم فتحا قريبا ومغانم كثيرة يأخذونها Indeed Allah was pleased with the believers when they gave their bay'ah their pledge to you O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم under the tree Allah knew what was in their hearts and he sent down a sakina, calmness and tranquility upon them, and he rewarded them with a near victory and abundant spoils that they will capture. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Muhammadur Rasulullah, walladhina ma'ahu ashidda'u al kuffar ruhama'u baynahum, tarahum ruka'an sujjada, يَبْتَغُونَ فَضْلًا مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرِدْوَانًا سِيمَاهُمْ فِي وُجُوهِهِمْ مِّنْ أَثَرِ السُّجُودِ ذَلِكَ مَثَلُهُمْ فِي التَّوْرَةِ Muhammad is the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم and those who are with him, meaning the companions, are severe against the disbelievers and merciful among themselves you see them bowing and falling down prostrate in prayer, seeking bounty from Allah and His good pleasure. The mark of them, meaning on their, of their faith, is on their faces, their foreheads, from the traces of their prostration during prayers. This is their description in the Torah. The Sheikh Fawzan said there is their description in the Torah. They are mentioned in the Torah like their Prophet mentioned Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but their description in the Injil, in the Gospel that which was revealed to Isa Alayhi Salam as Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala says كَزَرْعٍ وَمَثَلُهُمْ فِي الْإِنْجِيلِ كَزَرْعٍ أَخْرَجَ شَطْأَهُ فَآزَرَهُ فَاسْتَغْلَذَ فَاسْتَوَى عَلَى سُوْقِهِ يُعْجِبُ الزُّرَّاعَ لِيَغِيظَ بِهِمُ الْكُفَّارِ Their description in the Injil, in the Gospel, 
is like a sown seed which sends forth its shoot, then makes it strong. It then becomes thick, and it stands straight on its stem, delighting the sores that he, that he may enrage the disbelievers with them. Sheikh Saleh al-Fawzan, and we conclude with this, he says, so the above verse shows that no one is in, in, enraged by the companions of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, nor hates them except a disbeliever based on the saying of Allah, the Most High, who says, لِيَغِيظَ بِهُمُ الْكُفَّارِ That he, Allah SWT, may enrage the disbelievers with them, with the companions. He said, this is a sign of disbelief for Iyadu Billah. So hating, he says, hating the companions of the Messenger of Allah Wasallam or any one of them is disbelief and hypocrisy. And Allah's refuge is sought. As for the statement of Al Imam Bar Bahari where the word is a person of desires, Meaning, if a person speaks a single word in disparagement of the companions, then he is a person of desires. So if one is regarded as a follower of desires just by uttering one word, then how about one who authors books just to abuse and slander the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? What about that? How about this one who authors books just to abuse and slander the companions, probes into and magnifies their mistakes, Billah. Such a person, Sheikh Salah al-Fawzan said, such a person is following his desires because he has not spoken except due to desires in his mind and hatred for the companions of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. With that we come to the end of this class here and also this point number 25 Alhamdulillah we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us to adhere and to emulate the example of the companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because safety and is only in adhering to what they were upon wa kullu khayrin fi tiba'i man salaf وَكُلُّ شَرٍ فِي ابْتِدَاءِ مَنْ خَلَفْ Good, all good in this life and in the hereafter lays in adhering to the way of the Salaf, the Sahaba, the companions in the first place and whoever followed them upon that khair and evil or evil is in following the misguidance of those who came after them and speak ill about them like the Rawafid, the Shia and whoever promote their evil billah. ala Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama